Hi, welcome to our video on the arc sine, which is just the inverse of the sine. And we'll, I'll explain that in a moment. First, let's just find the sine of something, right? Let's find the sine of an angle. So, the sine of pi over 4, which is 45 degrees, we want to know what does that equal. One thing you could do to, to solve this is just set up your unit circle. And of course, I could plug this into a trig table or a calculator. But using the unit circle is going to help us understand the arc sign. And that is my best attempt for now uh, for a unit circle. So anyway, that's my unit circle. And let's draw the, the triangle that goes to like 45 degrees, right? We have 45 degrees on both sides. Okay. So if this is theta, and theta is equal to pi over 4, and that's 45 degrees, we have here a 90 degree angle. This has got to be what? It's a, it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle because our triangles add up to 180 degrees. So again, theta here, that's going to be equal to 45 degrees. And so is this one, which also means that the two legs opposite those angles are equal. And that's going to be helpful, right? Because we know our hypotenuse is 1. If these two legs are equal, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what they are. They're both going to be, let's say, x, right? So x squared plus another x squared, the two legs, is 2x squared. And that's going to equal the hypotenuse squared, which is just 1. We divide both sides by 2, and we get x squared equals a half. Take the square root of both sides, and x is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. But you want to rationalize that. So you multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. Well, what's that? Well, 1 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 2. And the square root of 2 times itself is just 2. So these two legs are both equal to the square root of 2 over the square root of 2, which means that this point is, is the square root of 2, comma, square root of 2. Now we're looking for sine, and we've talked about this in other videos, you're looking at the y value only, which means the sine of this theta equals this y value. So the sine of pi over 4, or 45 degrees, is just the radical 2 over 2. And that's the idea of sine. Now, arc sine is different. The arc sine of pi over 4, oops, of, not of pi over 4, sorry. The arc sine of radical 2 over 2, what does that equal? Well, when you're asking that, you're asking what angle gives us the sine of radical 2 over 2. And we just figured that out, right? We said that the sine of theta is equal to, well, radical 2 over 2. So this time, the arc sine of radical 2 over 2 equals pi over 4, or 45 degrees. And notice, that's just the reverse process here. The arc sine says, well, what angle gave us this? It's asking for that. You can always think of this as saying the sine of what mystery angle gave us radical 2 over 2. Well, you have to find that angle. That's what the arc sine is all about. You're finding angles. In, when we're using sine, we're using angles to find lengths. This is the opposite procedure. You might also see it written like this. The sine with a little negative 1 of radical 2 over 2. These all mean the same thing. And again, all it's saying is, in general, we'll say that arc, oops, arc sine of some x value equals theta. It's saying what theta, what angle here, gives us this x value. And that's the goal of, of the inverse trig functions, to find the angles that give us the side lengths. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, let's just go over one one important detail, I guess, which is that if 45 degrees gave us this sign, and we have a unit circle, this is going to happen again. If I go around the circle, right, so 45 degrees, and all the way around, back until I hit this line again, I've done a full rotation. So it's kind of like pi over 4, which is 45 degrees, plus a full rotation, which is 2 pi. And you can keep doing this, right? <coughs> If I got on again, it would be pi over 4 plus 3 pi, or uh, plus 4 pi, right? Another full rotation. So 
So what does that mean? Well, if we're in this case right now where we're pi over 4, and then pi over 4 plus another rotation, and then pi over 4 plus another rotation, and so forth, all give us, right, 40, 40, all give us square root of 2 over 2, that's a problem. Because now, the arc sine of the square root of 2 over 2 has a bunch of different answers. Pi over 4, and then pi over 4 plus 2 pi, and so forth. But, but we're calling this a function, and we don't want that to happen where one of our x values gives us a whole bunch of different thetas or y values. We want to have it so that if you're finding the arc sine of an x, it gives you an exact angle measure. So it won't give you all these extra ones, it'll only give you the exact one you're looking for. And the way we can do this is by restricting the domain and range. Let me show you what I mean. To restrict the domain and range, or at least think about what makes sense here to restrict, we have to think about the sine function as representing the y value, and we have to think about the arc sine, what it, what it means for the arc sine. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, the arc sine of x equals a theta. Let's start with x, our domain. So in this case, x is our domain. Well, to, to help us think about that, let's think about the sine of x, right? Oops, the sine of theta. When you take a sine of an angle, and you could, might remember this from the fluctuation of a graph, well, take the sine of any angle, and it's going to be between negative 1 and positive 1. So it could be negative 1, or it could be up to 1, but it's got to be between them. You can never go outside those ranges unless you change this function, right? Change the nature of the function by adding it onto the amplitude, but we're not going to get into that right now. So the idea is it fluctuates back and forth. Remember the graph, it's, it's just going right back and forth between negative 1 and positive 1. So that means here, that was our range between negative 1 and positive 1. Now we have the inverse function, so our domain is between negative 1 and positive 1. And all that's saying is it doesn't matter what angle you pick, right? It doesn't matter what angle you pick, the side length for the sine function is going to be between negative 1 and positive 1. And for the range, the range, you have to think about, well, where could we restrict our angles so that we don't get any repeats? So that, let's say I'm here, let me get my line tool, from here, right, at 45 degrees, I don't want to end up back around the circle back at 45 degrees. How can I restrict that? Well, it's, it, I think it makes a lot of sense that we do this. We restrict it to the first quadrant over here in this range and down here in this quadrant. And the reason is you don't get any repeats in these two quadrants, even these two angles, right? Positive 45 and then you think this is negative 45. Sure, for both of these triangles, the x values are equal, right? but the y values are different. So I, by sticking to the f this quadrant, the first quadrant, and the, f and the fourth quadrant, we guarantee that our y values, here they'll be positive and negative, they'll be opposites, will always be different. If I had gone maybe to, if I had chosen the first and second quadrant, that would be an issue because this angle right here, right, let's say that is, let's see, 180 minus, minus 45, so this is now going to be it's like a 45 degree angle. Um, this point is going to have the same y value as this point. So we don't want to use this quadrant or this quadrant for the same reasons that it doesn't match to this one. We could use these two, but it makes more sense, I think, to use these two right here, quadrants, quadrants one and two. And the way we, we actually write that is by pointing out, well, this point is pi over two, 90 degrees. And this point down here is, you can think of it as, as the angle negative pi over two. So our range for theta it's going to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And that prevents us from getting many different thetas for our x for our domain. Right? It keeps them matched up. Now let's look at one example to get a sense of how we go through all this. So anyway, um, I don't, did I say it in the other video? Let me just go back a second. I think I did. When you find the arc sign, yeah, okay. Again, so here's the idea. In the first problem, we found the arc sine of radical 2 over 2 and got pi over 4. 
And we kind of knew that already from our investigation for the sine. So now I'm going to show you how do you find the arc sine if you didn't have this prior knowledge. Right? What's the idea? So let's try a different problem. This time um, I'm going to show you the whole process that, or the way I think about it. And we're going to use the arc sine. Right, the arc sine of a different value of for x. Let's try negative radical three over two. We want to know what theta gives us this value. Okay, so let's set up our unit circle, and we're only going to pay attention to the first and, and fourth quadrants. Okay, that's my circle. So where is, and what does this mean? Well. The sine refers to the y value, so it tells us that my point, wherever it is in this circle, is some x, and the y is going to be equal to negative radical 3 over 2, and that's just because sine refers to the y value. Right? This is our y, which refers to sine. So where is that going to be? Somewhere down here. Let's just draw it out. That's negative radical 3. Oops. Negative radical 3 over 2. That's the, the height down here get here, it's negative radical 3 over 2. So now I'm going to draw that right triangle. Drop those lines. Okay, now I've got this right triangle, and I know that the hypotenuse is equal to 1, and I know that this leg right here, which is the y value, equals negative radical 3 over 2. I want to know what this leg is. So the Pythagorean theorem says that x squared, or unknown, plus negative radical 3 over 2 squared, what's that? That's just going to be positive 3 over 4, equals our hypotenuse squared, 1 squared, 1, and x squared, well that equals, I'm going to subtract 3 fourths from both sides, x equals a fourth, x squared equals a fourth, take the square root of this, and we get, well, square root of 1 is 1, square root of, of 2 is, of 4 is 2, so x equals 1 half. So that means this value right here is 1 half. And now, hopefully you recognize that this has got to be a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Our 30 degree angle is right here, right? In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the leg over here is equal to half the hypotenuse. And this has got to be 60 degrees over here. Because our three angles together have to add up to 180. So that means the arc sine of negative radical 3 over 2, or right like this, the sine with negative 1 of negative radical 3 over 2 equals 60 degrees and that's the idea of this process now on your calculator you can just usually press second and then sine or some combination of that to f and you enter in this value and then just make sure you're in degrees if you want degrees or radians if you want radians and you'll find out the arc sine as a quick check alright hope that helped